Hi, I'm Juliet, and today I'm going to give you a general overview and introduction to Pilates. So let's get started. I want you to stand, please, with your feet parallel, arms relaxed down by your side, and I want you to just have a little scan up and down of your body. Think about from the front to the back, from the side to the side, from the top to the bottom, and just notice how you're standing. And then as we work through each, each area of the body, perhaps you might want to adjust and correct. So I want you to think about having equal weight under both feet. And I want you to imagine you're standing on two triangles. Draw a line from your heel up to the knuckle of your little toe, across to the knuckle where the big toe joins to the foot, and back down into your heel. So imagine two triangles and having equal weight on all three points. So just notice you're not rolling into your insteps. And if you are a little flatter through the foot, think about ever so slightly lifting your instep just to redistribute that weight. Now think about lengthening through your spine. I want you to imagine that you're sending the crown of your head up towards the ceiling, but find that sense of opposition. So as you lengthen through the top of the head, Shoulders are drawn down. Imagine your hands are really heavy. Your fingertips are reaching down towards the floor. But notice here that you're not gripping in the quads and the glutes. You're not squeezing the thigh muscles and the buttock muscles. We want our balance and our support to come from the abdominal area and the pelvic floor area. So just relax those buttock muscles, relax those quads, those thigh muscles. So we've got that sense of lengthening through the spine. And I want you to create a bit of space between your collarbones. So you're going to draw your shoulder blades back towards each other and just open up slightly through your chest. Imagine you're trying to rotate your armpits ever so slightly forwards. You're breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your mouth. And we practice in Pilates something called lateral thoracic breathing, lateral sideways, thoracic middle spine. So we're going to breathe into our ribs and I want you to have a sense when you breathe in of your ribs pushing sideways into either side of your t-shirt. And as you breathe out, draw those ribs back down and in. I want you to imagine a big wide belt around your center. And if there were 10 notches on that belt, you're going to pull that belt into about the third notch. Alternatively, another way to imagine this is just think about slightly drawing your ribs away from the front of your t-shirt and very, very slightly pushing into the back of your t-shirt. Not so much that there's a very obvious shift, but just a subtle connection. Try to remember that most of the adjustment and correction in Pilates is very, very subtle and understated. So just a sense of drawing your ribs away from the front of your t-shirt and maybe just feeling the rib cage connecting to the back of your t-shirt. Now your hips are in line with each other. I want your collarbones and hip bones in line. And in order to find a neutral pelvis, which will help to have a equal distribution of load through the spine, I want you to think about your pubic bone and hip bones creating a triangle. Pubic bone and breastbone in line. Collarbones and hip bones in line, it is that simple. So if your hip bones are behind your collarbones, you're gonna to be too arched. Pubic bone, breastbone. If your pubic bone or hip bones are in front of your collarbones, breastbone, then you're going to be too flat. So you want to think about that plumb line, <coughs> collarbone, hip bone, breastbone, to pubic bone. Okay, so you may need to just fiddle, fiddle around with that a little bit and rock your hips forwards and backwards to help you find that neutral shape through your pelvis. You're lengthening through your neck, your chin is parallel to the floor, but your chin is sitting on the shelf and your ears are in line with your collarbones. So you may perhaps just push the back of your head slightly away so that your chin stays parallel and watch you're not drooping your, your chin down. So you've got that connection around your center. You're breathing into your ribs, shoulders are relaxed and down. And we're gonna talk about the pelvic floor connection. I want you to imagine this sling of muscles, almost like a, like a trampoline, sitting between your legs, running from the base of the spine and coming up towards the pubic bone. And these muscles help to support the weight of the internal organs, in addition to stabilizing the pelvic, the pelvic girdle and supporting the weight of the lumbar spine. So just have a sense of pulling up ever so slightly. Again, just enough to know you've got that connection. So those muscles are on a quiet background hum. And let's get some movement going now. Let's just turn our head side to side, three or four times each way. Breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth. Shoulders are relaxed and down. Try to mirror the move. So as far as you turn one way, make sure you match it going the other way and always consider the weaker or less able side. 
Bring your head to the center and just roll out your shoulders. Now we could spend a, a much longer time on the, the mobility, but today's just an introduction. So I am going to move through this one a little more quickly and let's roll those shoulders back. And likewise, the setup, the fundamentals, what makes Pilates unique, thinking about the basics of our posture. Again, we can go into that in a lot more detail, but for the purpose of today, I just want to get us moving. So from here now, I want you to travel your arm up to the ceiling and back down. Let's just do another three like this. Now, as you lift your arms, watch you don't let the shape of your spine change. So if my arms are traveling to the ceiling, I'm trying to draw my ribs away from the front of my t-shirt so I don't arch. Let's just do one more of those. Now this next time, as I bring my arms back down, I'm going to bend my knees, reach my arms forward, come into a squat. I'm going to continue and take my arms to the ceiling. I'm going to come back down and into a squat. Now from here, I'm going to add a heel lift. If you feel that's a little more than you want to do, then you could just add one heel at a time. Into squat, think about pelvic floor connection, abdominal connection and heel raise. Shall we just do one more of these? And again, into that squat, come back through, pick up those heels and lower your heels. And I want you to leave your arms to the sky and come over to one side. Return to the center and repeat. Now, if that doesn't suit your shoulders, you can work with your arms down by your sides or you can just swap arms Take one arm, watch the upper arm stay straight, watch it doesn't become bent. Okay, so you've got that option, or hold your head between your arms. Now on this next one, I want you to please come back to the center and open your arms out wide. Again, you've got this option, you've got, you've got this option as well. So work with your arms in the position best suited to you. And I want you to turn away to one side. Now what's key here is that your hips stay still. So as I now turn to my left, I want to ever so slightly push my left hip forward, very, very slightly. Likewise, as I'm turning to my right, I don't want my right hip to travel backwards with where my, with my, where my arms are going. The movement comes from the middle spine. So I want you to think about turning your ribs and allowing your arms to follow the move rather than your arms leading the move. Chin in line with breastbone. So watch you don't look over your shoulders. You think of that alignment as you go through your rotation. Come back to your center and relax your arms. And we're just going to finish with some roll downs. So think about mobilization of the spine <clears throat> in what we call the sagittal plane. I'm just going to turn sideways for you for a moment. And I want you to have your knees bent, take a little nod of your head and roll forwards and over. Now watch you and stick your hips out behind you. So I want you to think about your sit bones staying above your heels and roll yourself back up. Now you may feel that that's best for you to leave your knees bent, but if you want to progress it, you'll start to work with your legs straight. But again, watch that you keep the weight towards the front of both feet. You don't sit your hips away behind you. And think about articulation. So I'm taking a nod of my head. I'm lengthening through my neck. I want to make myself as long through the back of the body as I can, reaching down towards the floor. I'm pushing my ribs into the back of my T-shirt. I'm pulling my tummy button right in towards my backbone. And let's just do one more and then we'll get cracking. So breath out, rolling forward. Remember you've got the option of having your knees bent if that's better for you. If you're particularly tight in the backs of the thighs, then I would suggest you leave those knees bent so that your hamstrings don't dominate and uh, interfere, compromise with how you're working. Okay, so we've gone through some basic simple mobility. Now we're going to come down onto the floor and we're going to start with an exercise that's one of the sort of famous Pilates exercises called the 100. So down onto the mat. Now we're only going to go through the basic level. So onto the mat. And before we go anywhere, we're just going to talk about imprint and set up in this position. So your knees are bent, your feet are on the floor, your arms are down by your sides. And again, think about drawing your tummy button in ever so slightly. Think about equal weight through the hips. Now I want you please just to lift one leg into tabletop, what we call the tabletop position. And I want you to let the back of the rib cage become heavier. Try to avoid a big tilt. Try not to make your back go flat. Make this muscular rather than skeletal. So can you let the back of the rib cage sink a little heavier into the floor, get a little heavier into your waistband and then pick up your second leg. 
Bring one foot back down, bring our second foot back down and relax into your neutral pelvis. So what's key here is that the bottom of the rib cage stays heavy to the floor. Okay, let's go into our exercise 100. So arms are down by your sides and with this is all about the breath. So I want you to breathe in for a count of five, breathe out for a count of five. I'm not going to count for you because I can't I can't tell what your lung capacity is. You're going to count yourself breathing in for a count of five, breathing out for a count of five. Now, if you feel today this is enough for you and you want to concentrate on your setup, that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, come with me. Now, I'm going to take one leg into tabletop. But the option here of holding this leg for three to five breaths before I lower my foot and repeat on the other side. Now don't underestimate the demand here because in addition to holding this position, you're thinking about lateral thoracic breathing, you're thinking about shoulder stabilization, abdominal connection, pelvic floor connection, coordination, working from a strong center, concentration. So there's lots of factors that make Pilates the unique form of exercise that it is. But I'm gonna progress it a little further. So I'm gonna let my ribs become a bit heavier. I'm going to get heavier into my waistband. I'm gonna pick that second leg up. So I've got both legs into tabletop, I'm into my imprint. And from here, you can, you can hold this position for another three or four breaths. Alternatively, if you want to progress a little further, lift your head and chest up. But if you are in this position, make sure that both shoulder blades are clean away from the floor. If your shoulder blades are on the floor, your chin is going to be pushing forwards. It's going to be uncomfortable through that neck. So shoulders come away from the floor. Arms are hovering above the floor. You're breathing in for five. You're breathing out for five. And let's bring this one to its end now. So we come out of the exercise in reverse. So I'm going to return my arms to the floor, lower my head, lower one foot, and then the second foot. And those tummy muscles have just been working pretty hard. So I'm going to come into a full body stretch. Stretch both abdominals out. And from here, we're going to roll over onto one side. So, what I want you to do, please, is take your lower arm out and rest your head on your lower arm. Hips stay in line. We're going to be on a side kick. The side kick is really effective for developing, developing strength in the muscles around the, the thoracic spine to help to stabilize and improve and support posture. Now, if you want to, you can pop a block or a rolled up towel between your head and your lower arm if you feel uncomfortable here. Hips are stacked. If you're a little bit wobbly, you may choose to bend your lower knee. Think about pelvic floor connection, think about abdominal connection. And I want you please just to lift one leg to hip height. Now flex your foot and push the sole of your foot away. And you'll see that as you push your foot away from you, the ribs lift slightly away from the floor. And that's what I want. A little sense of space there. I could just slide my fingertips between the bottom of the rib cage and the floor so that you get that oblique connection. There's your balance. Now you may find that's enough for you and then you'll bring your leg back down and perhaps repeat it. But otherwise, let's take that leg away. Now, your upper hand is flat to the floor but there's no weight here, okay? And we're just going to travel this leg forwards and back. So I'm going to flex. I'm going to dorsiflex forward. I'm going to plant a flex back. Let's do three more. What I want you to notice is that as your leg comes forward, you are leaning into this hand. So to challenge yourself more, you can take your hand away. And the purpose of this is to get that strength in that corset of muscles. So the bigger the range of movement, the more power you work with, the more challenge you're going to put into that, into that sort of area to stabilize your spine. Okay, bring your leg back down. And from here, I'd like to push yourself up to sitting for our next exercise. And we're going to come into spine twist. Now, <clears throat> you may choose to sit on a rolled up towel or a block. So if you feel you're a little bit tight through your lower back, maybe a bit of a bite in the backs of the thighs, then do take a prop to sit on. Now, I'm happy sitting with my legs out long. Sitting cross-legged doesn't suit me, but you've got that option. So if you prefer to have your legs crossed, that's fine. But just remember to uncross and recross halfway through so that you don't always have your legs in the same position. Now, what we want to do is get the rotation of the spine like we did in mobility, not the hips. So I want my feet to stay exactly in line. Let's start with our arms in prayer position. 
And as we breathe out, we're going to rotate the rib cage and turn away. And as we breathe in, we're coming back to the center, but have a sense of growing taller. So I'm going to turn away. And as I come back to my center, I want to imagine I'm growing taller still. Now I could progress to taking my arms out to the side into what we call the Cossack position. As you're working, watch that your feet aren't marching. I want you to keep going while I'm talking to you. Watch that your feet aren't marching. Watch you have an arch away from the back of your t-shirt. So again, breastbone to pubic bone, think of that alignment. Collarbone to hip bone. You may choose to take your arms a little further. Now, if your arms are wide, watch that they stay in line. Watch you don't have one arm coming across you. So imagine you're holding a broom handle across the back of the shoulders and into each hand. So it's purely thoracic rotation, okay, rather than hips twisting. Let's come back to the center and let's just stretch that one out. So we've relied a lot on these obliques intercostals to support us both for the side kick and the spine twist. So let's give them a little stretch. Take one hand to the floor, one hand to the ceiling and just reach up and over. Keep this elbow straight and reach up and over. And then back to the center and let's swap it onto the opposite side. Okay. Come back to the center and we're going to come down onto our back for the shoulder bridge. And we're going to think about a combination here of mobility as well as strength. So just bending your knees, roll yourself down. Now please for the shoulder bridge, don't use anything under your head because there's a risk here that you would overflex the cervical spine and neck. So if you did have a support under your head, I would ask for this exercise, you take it away. Now let's just have a little whiz through our setup again. Shoulders are planted down into the floor, knees are bent. I want your heels underneath your knees. Avoid your heels being too close towards you because that's going to risk overflexion of the knee and the ankle. So think about your heels underneath your knees. Now, if you're a little bit tight in the front of the thighs, you may choose to shuffle your heels a little bit further away. Let's see how we get on with that one. Shoulders are heavy and I want you to start by tipping your hips backwards. So think about putting your tailbone right up between your legs and then pushing away again. Let's do four or five of those. But what I want you to notice is that everything else stays still. Try to isolate the pelvic girdle. So as you flatten your back and tip your hips backwards, try not to let your, your head start nodding. Keep your head still, keep your shoulders still and really work on the lumbar spine and that mobility. Also notice that your knees sit quietly. Watch your knees aren't wobbling in and out. And if they are, maybe grab a cushion, a rolled up towel, pop it between your knees to keep alignment. Now the next time we're going to tip those hips back. We're going to pick up that tailbone and peel that spine away, rolling up towards the shoulders and curl back down. Now you may choose to stay just at tilting the pelvis. You may enjoy rolling up and rolling down and not take it any, taking it any further. But I'm going to give us one more option here. So I'm going to ask you to take your arms to the ceiling. You're going to roll up into your bridge, hold a static bridge and take both arms overhead, palms facing towards each other and return for three. But as your arms go overhead, the shape of your spine doesn't change. So I'm still pulling my hip bones up towards my bottom ribs. I'm watching that I'm not letting my ribs flare into the front of my t-shirt. I'm gonna leave my arms to the ceiling and curl back down and then repeat. So just for the purpose of the class, I'm going to remind you about the different levels. So if you want to, you're very welcome to stay in pelvic tilt. It's a lovely way to, uh, to stretch out a grumpy back just gentle and not, not too, too, too intrusive. But also you've got the option of curling up and curling down. Or last but not least, arms to the ceiling, hold that static pose and take your arms overhead three to five times before you roll back down. And then from here, let's give that lower back a little release. So we'll bring our knees into our chest and just give those knees a little hug. Now, just so that I'm not lying with my back to you, I'm going to quickly spin around. But if we were in the class, you would just roll onto the opposite side. But I'm just going to change ends of my mat and we're going to our side kick again. So onto our opposite side. So get that sense of connection. Watch that the ribs haven't dropped into the floor. So the easiest way to get that connection 
is lift that upper leg and push the sole of your foot away. Imagine that you're trying to rest the sole of your foot on that wall at the opposite end of the room, okay? Upper hand to the floor. Now, if this is enough for you, absolutely fine, lift and lower. And don't underestimate this because I want you to think about your alignment. That you're not leaning into your hand. That you're not arching your back. That you're not rolling forwards and backwards. That you're still breathing into your ribs. Abdominal connection, shoulders are stabilized. So do you see there are so many points to think about? Otherwise, it just becomes A, another form of exercise. So we want to think about those Pilates principles, working from a strong center. Let's progress it. But again, if you don't want to, you'll carry on holding your leg at this position and then taking it back down. But otherwise, you want to take your leg out in front, point your toes to return. Watch this lower arm is in line. Now it's up to you how big a range of movement you have. But again, I don't want the weight on this hand to change. So to challenge yourself, take your hand away. And all the way through this, you're trying to lengthen through that upper leg. Breathe out on effort. Breathe in to return. Let's do this one more time. So I'm going to send that leg out in front and return and lower that foot back down to the floor. So think about stability through the center, control, connecting with our, our abdominals and our stabilizing muscles. We're going to our last exercise for today. We're going to come over onto our fronts and come into the swan dive. So just bring yourself over onto your tummy. I'm going to keep my head slightly lifted just so that you can hear me. But I'm going to ask you to bring your forehead onto the floor and you're going to make the shape of a capital E with both arms. So you've got a right angle bend in your elbows. Now quick, quick setup here. You're going to have your legs together in one way, shape or form. So you can either have your legs parallel together, but that can be quite challenging. You might find you're really working through the glutes. You're a little bit tight in the outer hips. In which case, from there, let your heels separate and leave your big toes together. I want a closed chain. If you have your feet wide, wide apart, you've totally lost adductor connection. You've, you've opened the chain. So have a closed chain so that the lower body becomes the stabilizing area as we then work through the upper body. So either feet parallel or big toes together, heels are separated. And just check the front of the pelvis is connected to the floor. So I want your pubic bone heavy on the mat. If your pubic bone lifts up, you're sticking your bottom in the air, your lower back is arching, you've lost abdominal connection. So think about the pubic bone and the hips heavy. Now, if you're struggling to keep, keep your hips and your pubic bone on the floor, grab a rolled up towel, just fold a towel over once or twice and pop it in under the front of both hips to give you that support and that point of contact. Now, let's leave the arms quiet on the floor. And as you breathe out, just lift your head and chest Eye line stays down, don't shorten your neck. And as you breathe in, lower down. Now what I want you to do, please, is stay as light as you can under both arms. So I don't want you to use your arms to push you away from the floor. I want you to think about your middle back working. Feet are together, remember, either parallel or big toes together and heels are separated. I want you to imagine that the crown of your head is sliding up and down the wall in front of you. Now I'm going to progress it. You may choose to carry on as you are and that's fine. Otherwise, as I lift my head and chest, I want to take both my arms away with me at the same time and lower. Notice here that you don't open and close at the elbow and that your wrists sit ever so slightly higher than your elbows. If your elbows are in the air, you've rotated forward through the shoulders. Keep those shoulders down, breathe into those ribs. Now I'm gonna take it one step further if it suits you, come with me. Lift your head and chest, hold it, and take your legs out, lo legs, little, little arms out long. And as you return, lift your chest a little higher. Keep your eye line to the floor. Send those arms out long, and pull back in, scooping that tummy button right up into your backbone. One more time, shoulder blades stay slid down your back, and return. Bring your arms back down to the floor, and relax. And what I'd like you to do, please, is push yourself up into four-point kneeling and come into cat stretch. So you're going to draw your chin to your chest and open through your spine and relax. We're going to do a couple more of those. 
So we keep the reps low. We don't do loads and loads of reps in Pilates. It's never about high reps because we want to think about all the different fundamental um, elements that make it unique. So there are so many different things that we can correct on. Better to keep it low reps and make sure that we're doing everything perfectly. Now from here, I'm in my cat stretch, from here, you're gonna send your hips back, walk your fingertips down the floor away from you and take that stretch. Now for me, I'm not going to go any further than this because I have to be a little cautious with over flexing my knees. But you may choose to sit heavy onto your heels, that's up to you. And walk those fingertips down the floor away from you. Okay, bring yourself back up. And I'd like you from here, please, to come over onto your back. So just like our mobility, I'm only going to go through a fairly swift stretch and closing phase. You can do much more in, in, another, in another video. This is just our introduction. I'd like you to open your arms out to your sides to quarter past nine. Put your knees and feet together and just drop both knees away to one side. Hold it here for three, four, five breaths. And think about your in-breath pushing into the upper side of the rib cage. So as you breathe in, imagine the distance from your armpit to your hip on the upper side and try to increase it. And as you breathe out, maybe go a little further into that rotation. So as my knees are away to the right, my left shoulder is really heavy into the floor. My knees are stacked, my left hip is lifted. Let's just hold it for another breath here and then you're going to come back to the center and I'd always ask you to hover in the center just a moment. Let everything just realign itself and then take it away to the other side. If you want to take it a little bit further, you can extend the upper leg. Keep the knees in line and just extend the upper leg out longer and reach the arm behind you a little further away. Focus your breath on going into the upper side of the rib cage. So use the position you're in to give you an additional stretch. Okay, you're going to bend the knee up aside if you had your leg out long and come back to your center. And let's go into a full body stretch. So take both arms overhead, take both legs out long. Try not to get lazy here. Imagine that you're hanging from the branch of a tree and you just can't quite find the floor with your toes. Stretch out as long as you can. Okay, and bring your arms back down. Now for one last stretch, we're going to go into what's called a developmental stretch. So developmental means that we're trying to improve and, and increase rather than just return to what it was previously. So I want you just to take one leg to the ceiling. Now you're very welcome to use a towel or a band to support you. So if you're a little bit tight in the back of the thigh and you need some support, then just grab something to help you. Otherwise, using your hands, I want you to take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, draw your foot in towards you and hold it for a couple of breaths. And then on the second breath, again, deep breath in. And as you breathe out, see if you can take it further still. Don't force it and keep the legs straight. So as soon as you bend the knee, you switched off the hamstrings. So keep your legs straight and see if you can bring your leg in towards you. Now, if your leg starts to shake, take it further away from the stretch. Okay, and we're aiming to hold here for about 30 seconds. So four, five, six deep breaths, okay? And when you're ready, just return and obviously go onto the opposite side. So start going into the stretch without any force, without any stress, allow your body to feel safe. So if you're forcing it, everything's going to get tight and stressed. And use your breath, deep breath in. And as you breathe out, perhaps you'll go a little bit further, but again, no force. Feel free to use a band or a towel around the back of your leg to help you. And again, thinking around about the total of about 30 seconds. Okay. Bend your knee, bring your foot back down to the floor. And just to finish, I want you to do three or four big circles with both arms, out and around, and breathe. Maybe by now you're breathing a little more slowly and a little more fully. Think about your out breath matching your in breath. So as deeply as you breathe in, breathe out just as fully and completely. Let's reverse those circles. Let your shoulders relax. You've still got that very gentle connection, abdominal connection, pelvic floor connection. 
but you're relaxing your breath now, allowing your breath to become more natural rather than lateral thoracic breathing. We're going to bring your arms back down by your side and I'd like you just to, just to come to this, uh, up to standing, I'd like you to bring yourself into four point kneeling for me. Tuck your toes underneath you, pick up your hips, take your hips to the ceiling and then let your heels become heavy. Keep your legs straight. So again, find that sense of opposition. You're pushing your hips up, you're pressing your heels down. And from here, just walk your hands back into your feet. You may need to bend your knees. Chin tucked in, eye line back towards your knees. And as you breathe out, slowly roll up. Now don't stress your knees. So you may want to bend them. Slowly roll yourself up. All the way back up. Come on, take your arms to the ceiling. Stretch up tall. So this is just a really, really quick overview, but hopefully, you feel pretty well worked and it's giving you an idea of the different ways that we, we need to think with regard to Pilates and the way we teach. And although we may appear to work more slowly, there can be a lot more power. So there's a lot more to come from wherever, from what we've done today. Well done, thank you for joining me.